Hello, I'm IBX Tweaker, and today I'm going to be giving you class setup tips for the Honey Badger Assault Rifle, the silenced uh, assault rifle that's used by most people. I'd say this is the most frequently used gun in the game, and I thought for the longest time it would be the OP weapon, but it's not It's not even the best assault rifle, it's just a good uh, assault rifle. And it's a good weapon, and it has its uh, niche, but it's not the best for everything, and I'll probably get into that uh, in this video. Uh, so basically this gameplay is, I think it's only a 25 to twi uh, 5 on uh, Stonehaven, and that's against really bad people, but it's one of those games where it's like, I don't know how I did well, but let's let's upload this anyway and see what people think. So it was when the game first came out and I've been playing for a couple of days already. Uh, so that's why everyone's so bad. It's not me playing squads. A lot of people think that uh, from my day one game plays. It's just everyone not understanding the map. So me taking advantage of it and like being really tired but still managing to do really well. So that's what this gameplay is. And yeah, so let's get into actually talking about the Hunter Badger, why it's interesting and stuff. Uh, so the Honey Badger has the integrated silencer. And I, dub I did my research on uh, you know the Honey Badger versus the other weapons in terms of range. If the integrated silencer actually takes away from it. And basically it's kind of like a half, so, uh, like half the penalty from uh, not having the silencer. On. So it's uh, it's got a little less range than the other assault rifles, but the like it's not as much as a silencer would take off. But there's no w way to put a muzzle brake on to put it, you know, like extra twenty percent like the other assault rifles have. So. If the muzzle brake is one of your favourite attachments, you really enjoy getting that 20% range back. Uh, then this is probably, you know, not the assault rifle for you. If you were going to put a silencer on a weapon anyway, this is a good one to use. Uh, so yeah, let's get right into what I recommend actually using on this weapon and why it's so nice. So basically, uh, as far as the silencer goes, it's already got one built in. Uh, as far as sights go, I do not like any sights on this weapon. If you, tr I tried using a holographic, I used an ACOG for a little bit, and I also used a red dot. Um... None of them really did what I want them to do. Like, even a red dot, I actually prefer the iron sights to a red dot. Because even though I love the red dot, you know that if you've seen these videos. Um, something about these iron sights just work at the range this weapon's meant to do. Because this uh, it has a lot of kick at long ranges. Uh, but at close ranges, the iron sights just seem to track targets better. You know, there's something about them. Uh, maybe it's those green dots. Maybe I just really like them. But I'm not sure what it is. But I really prefer iron sights in this weapon. You can go with a red dot, but I'd recommend trying to use the iron sights first. Because they're really, really good iron sights. Uh, they work at the ranges they're meant to and you don't really need them past the ranges that it works at. So that's what I recommend there. Uh, second of all, um, that means that we now have uh, two like perk, uh, sorry, two attachments for one from each uh, equipment slot and uh, you can basically put on anything you want or one from each category which means you essentially have four attachments on this weapon uh, which is a really really nice thing about it. I think that's one of the things a lot of people like. Uh, so since uh, I did have an underbarrel and a I guess it's a magazine type uh, attachment uh, the one what I went with is extended magazine grip. Alternatively you could go with something wacky like shotgun and uh, armor piercing. Uh, we'll get into a more quirky but interestingly actually effective class uh, later. So let's go right with the recommended class right now. Uh, grip and extended mags is what I'm using, which I know unique, but basically the grip lowers recoil 20%, allows you to go a little bit further with your range. Um, even red dot grip, by the way, doesn't work too well. And extended mags, it because only has 30 in the clip, it fires pretty fast, not FAD or ARX fast, but it still fires pretty darn fast, so you kind of need the extended mags if you want to get, you know, like, three, four kills in the clip rather than one or two. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'd recommend as far as uh, the attachments go. Um, secondaries, I would actually recommend pulling on the akimbo pistols for this loadout. Uh, although it is a pretty good uh, close range weapon and uh, pulling out the akimbo pistols will, you know, kind of make you lose the, the stealth of it. I really still would recommend just... Um, because it is, it, uh, assault rifles aren't the best at close range in the game. They do pretty well at close range, but you want to have the, you know, just that neck, little bit extra in close range. Obviously, on the larger maps, you could forego the secondaries, but I just leave them on there anyway, so I am used to having them there. Because uh, switching it out for each map is difficult. So. Uh, tacticals, I did not go with a tactical for this weapon, although since it is a assault rifle range, you could go with the thermobaric grenade, uh, or a 9 bang or something. Uh, I really didn't find them that useful on the larger maps, but if, if you're playing dome and 9 bangs, always fun. Uh, sorry, not dome, strike zone. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'd recommend as far as that goes. Uh, lethal, a C4, it, it's nice, it just, it covers everything so well. Uh, obviously you could trade out for frag grenade, but I'd recommend C4, it just, it works for everything in my opinion, except the crazy long range. But, for long range you can actually just get away, so it's kind of the defensive equipment, which is what I like, I like to defend myself. Uh, IED is also, you know, an option if you want to play stealthy and just, uh, really be annoying, which I guess is what some people do in Call of Duty. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'd recommend as far as, uh, equipment goes. So, 
perks is a little bit uh, interesting with this one. You can go with the stealth perks, which kind of fits the build, uh, which is off the radar, dead silence, and takedown, I think. Uh, but I honestly wouldn't recommend it, because I think you should uh, maybe strengthen this weapon before you go into the stealth. So, first of all, Stalker. Uh, Stalker's really nice, because it means you can uh, just keep you know moving around uh, nice like as you move. Uh, quick Draw is also a nice one in that category. Uh, steady Aim will really help you out close range, turn you into an SMG. Uh, kind of, almost, uh, close range, a silenced SMG too. Uh, uh, and then maybe a little bit on the go so you can sprint around corners and stuff and do that fast stuff. And then if, you, if you've got the points laying around, then agility is always a nice one too. So then after you've got those points, uh, perks you want on, uh, hardline and ping are another two that are particularly good. Uh, then I'd recommend, if you have any points left and you really want the stealth, uh, off the radar, uh, on the radar, off the radar, whatever it's called, is a smart one, and so is uh, because it pairs really well with the Sciencer. Uh, not that you really shop on UAB that much anyway, but off the radar will just give you that tiny bit of, uh, you know, nice, I guess, avoidance. And then uh, Dead Silence will keep you hidden at close range, which is where you really want to be with this weapon. Uh, because I guess close slash medium range, to put it more in perspective. Uh, but this weapon is a good assault rifle in that it is a SMG kind of built in, but not a full SMG. It's confusing to explain. Uh, so yeah, that's this weapon in a nutshell. Use it at close medium range and you'll do some worth good things. Uh, so to really discuss the quirky different loadout for this weapon, because there is a second way to use it that most assault rifles can't be used. Uh, basically if you put the burst fire attachment on it, as well as potentially a red dot for it because red dot seems to pair well first fire. Uh, you could obviously trade that out for something like the grip so you could get the extra bit of the aim. Uh, it actually works really well with the uh, burst fire. It's one of like two or three assault rifles I think actually works a burst fire. Uh, it has a little bit of increased damage as well so it might help you out if you're going for a long range. Uh, but it is a really nice assault rifle if you pair it with burst fire. So maybe you know give that a try if you wanted to try this weapon in a different way. Um, and yeah that's how you would use the honey badger assault rifle. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you make a good class of the honey badger. Uh, I assume that you've already used the honey badger a lot because it's uh everyone else seemed to unlock the honey badger first but I preferred the SA80 just on the basic look of it myself. But that's just me. Um, so yeah I if you probably used already the user, this weapon, but if you haven't, then uh, definitely give it a try, because it's interesting. Again, not the best, but interesting. And that's all I want from a weapon in Call of Duty, and that's all you should want to, maybe, sometimes. Um, so yeah, this game is coming to a close. I did, again, I, I did well, even though I really shouldn't have done. Uh, if you look at the leaderboard, there's like I, so many level 1s, 2s, and 4s. It's, it was the most exciting time of year, uh, when you get the game early, and then you get to kill everyone because they don't understand what they're doing at midnight. Um... It was, yeah, it was a fun thing. So if you enjoyed the video, like it, I think I already said that. Check out the other two videos on screen just after the outro. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.